right, good morning. So, yeah, thank you for all four of you that are in the auditorium this day. Uh, my family said no jokes today because nobody's going to laugh. But I don't think I could probably do that. So, uh, this morning, instead of uh, focusing on social distancing, for all of you that are on the live feed, I want you to be practicing your social awkwardness. Because we're going to ask you to be feeling as awkward as we are here as a skeleton crew. Uh, so, uh, yes, Matt Mertz, I understand you're in Sunday school. We expect you all to be standing during the song service this morning. Uh, we don't all need to sing together. Um, I do want to start out with scripture, though, this morning. Um, and I want to start in Psalms chapter 86. Uh, it's just one of those cool things. Lots of you are having the same kind of experience. Um, one of those times where being a person of faith in the true God of heaven um, is such an amazing thing. And I wish we could share that with everybody. Uh, but this morning, just as a part of the reading plan that I'm on, it was in Psalms chapter 86, and it just seemed extremely appropriate. And uh, so I'm going to start there, and uh, then we're going to start into um, probably the most awkward song service we've done in a really long time, except for Drew's on Wednesday night. That's right. All right, here we go. Uh, Psalms 86. Uh, just listen along. Uh, at home, you're supposed to have your Bibles anyway, so go ahead and open up. Uh, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee. For thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, thou art God alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. I just want to go back to verse 11. This is the one he really hit me with this morning, uh, particularly as we deal with all the stress and all the information and the noise and, um, and the news of our day. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. And right here, unite my heart to fear thy name. What impressed me with that this morning is, is that all of this is to bring everything in our life, is to bring us to our focus on Him. And so my prayer for us, even as a church, as we're meeting the way that we're meeting right now, is that our hearts will be united to fear His name, to be focused on Him. All right, we'll uh, open in a word of prayer real quick, and then we're going to start into our song service. Father, we're very thankful. Uh, we're very thankful uh, for the ways that You have taken care of us, for the ways that You have provided for us. Um, we can be very thankful that we live in a time period where we have access to your word, to preaching, to teaching, through technology in ways that uh, people who have gone through these kinds of experiences before never had. And uh, so uh, give us the grace to be able to uh, meet collectively, even though we are separate from one another. Uh, bring our hearts together. Help us to just focus on you for this period of time that we have this morning, Father. Uh, and we do thank you for all the ways that you've taken care of us. So, all right. So if you're in the room, you still have to stand with me, right? All right, we're going to say now, great is our Oh, 
services. We will uh, start at 6 p.m. Um, with our live stream, and then we've added a service at 7.30 p.m. Um, will be a team service, but everybody's welcome to come listen, but Barlow will be preaching. We'll have some songs and a kind of camp theme songs, and we're looking forward to that tonight at 7.30. And then again on Wednesday night, we'll have services at 6 p.m., and then um, that's with the kids. Brother Warner's number is 491-1101. If you need to text, he'd like to text you and would like to create that relationship with you. That's 491-1101. He's going to give a prize out this uh, week, and he'll need your number to text you um, who won. So uh, make sure you get a part of the kids program. Looking forward to having a great job last week. They're doing Zoom so the kids can interact back and forth. And then 7 p.m. service on Wednesday night will be here on the live stream. Um, each and every night, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 8.30, um, I've asked that our church get together, uh, just call in. Um, I've put a number on our Facebook page, call in, and there's a, uh, um, there's a, uh, um, a PIN number you put in after that, and um, you'll be able to hear me, and I'll be able to hear you. Um, I ask once you announce who you are, your family's online, that you mute that, and then we'll just go together in prayer each and every night at 8.30 um, for our church, for our country, for our president. And um, it'd be good to hear many of your voices. If you can do that, that's at 8.30 every night and um, um, other than Wednesday and Sunday. And then if you were able, at 4.30 each and every day, those same days, Brother Harding is put together a bunch of preachers from around the, the world, really. And um, we're hoping for 1,000 this week. We, I think we were close to 200 last night. Um, at 4.30 each and every day. And like I said, that's where I got the idea to do that. But I thought, boy, how more important, uh, no more important time to pray than now. And I'm, I've been asking God for a couple things. Uh, the big thing is, is Lord, uh, teach us to pray. And uh, boy, it's been good just to be in prayer. And the, the quiet time, be still and know that I am God. And when, you know, he'll calm your fears and he'll take you through the storm. And uh, just a little closer walk with Jesus, that worship time, that fellowship time, the awkwardness that we may feel in the room without all the kids and everybody singing. Um, you know, really and truly, I, I was telling myself Wednesday night, well, you know, this isn't much different than you and the Lord in the office and when you're alone with him. And, uh, you know, when you preach and the messages that you preach, I often tell people if you heard the messages that I preach when you're not around, well, I guess we're getting to do that. <laughs> But uh, we're, we're glad you're here, glad, glad you tuned in today. Um, but if you can, tune into that prayer time. I think that's very important. Then I ask God, Lord, give me a passion for souls. And as I've watched the people dying, over 3,000 around the world, and I think of our missionaries, I was able to talk to Casey this week and uh, just hear his voice and the comfort that he has and knowing that he's where God wants him to be and has made a decision to stay there for now. Um, and several of our missionaries I've talked to, Brother Compton sent me a video of him getting the coronavirus test. It's not a fun test, and uh, he has to administer that there in the village and had to learn how to do it. So he videoed himself doing it. Um, it it's good for a laugh, but it's, it, it hurts, I promise you that. And uh, So uh, just be praying for them as they make decisions on shutting down the villages and not allowing. I mean, just a lot of decisions have to be made. But I say, God, I, I want a passion for souls, and I've been praying for that all year. Lord, I, give, me a, give me a heartbeat. Lord, let me, let me think about those that are dying and going to hell. And as I look every day at the numbers of people that have passed on and around the world, and I realize the flu and all the different stories that are out there now and all the different people that have passed on are, are really a whole lot more. But really, it's just focused me on the reality of boy, why are we here? We're here to worship Him, fellowship with Him, honor Him, glorify Him, but 
He has us here as ambassadors for Christ. And tonight you'll want to listen in, tune in as God's given me a message on when he sanctified us, when he set us apart, and what he set us apart to, that ministry of reconciliation and the opportunities that we have during this pandemic. A couple other things to remind you of, um, and you know, the upcoming services, we're, we're not sure how long we'll have to do what we're doing right now. We were discussing this morning, maybe for Easter Sunday, an outside service, being able to set something up along that line. Um, we're praying that it's over. We're hoping that just a couple weeks and we're able to assemble back together as far as coming together, more so than just online. But Lord willing, Lord willing, hopefully we'll be able to set something up and that will all take place. I believe God can perform a miracle. He has stopped plagues. He has stopped pandemics before. And as soon as they started, they were able to stop. And it's just God. We'll be sure to give God the glory and all the praise for it. But I believe if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. And I believe it's time that you can seek his face. I, I love the fact that families are together and the world is just shut down. Sports aren't important. Nothing else in life is important but family and praying for one another, checking on your neighbors. You know, it's the way America should be. It's the way we used to be. And boy, I hope you get back to that. And I encourage you, think of our elders in our church. Call them, check on them. I've tried to call many of them and make sure that they have what they need. Uh, if there's anything any of you need, please let me know. We'll do what we can do to help facilitate that. And then um, I encourage you to uh, continue to be tuning in to each and every service, to continue to give. There's a space on our Facebook page where I believe that you can click on that and be able to give through that. You can mail it in to the PO Box. Um, 2706 and uh, you're able to do that um, if you need anything there again please let me know we love you and are thankful that you're here this morning let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll get back into the rest of our song <laughs> service we're not shaking hands this morning we're not passing the plate but um, I ask you to give as God's given unto you and allow God to work through um, you know our missionaries and God to work through and protect those that are in harm's way we have missionaries in very much hot spots right now around the world that uh, where we just pray in God's hedge of protection about them. So let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we love you today. Thank you so much for your word and for your truth. Thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for our sin. God, we know you're too wise to be mistaken, too good to be unkind. God, this is a very timely thing in your plan, and God, you have a plan. Lord, you said you'd work all things together for the good. And God, help us, Lord, not to get focused on all the negative and all the bad things, the things that we're not allowed to do, the things, the places we're not allowed to go, and all the stuff that we feel that we've lost. But God, may we focus on what we have. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for our homes and, Lord, the food that you've given us. Lord, we're so thankful for all that it is that you've done in our lives and all that you've given us. Lord, we think of that song, I've got food on my table and shoes on my feet. Lord, we, you, you, Lord, you've given us so much more. Lord, you've given us a fine family. And God, may we interact with our children and communicate with our teenagers and communicate with one another. And Lord, may we see great and mighty things. Lord, may this be the beginning of a revival across America and around the world. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we'll be sure to give you all the glory and honor and praise. God, may you receive glory in our singing today. In Jesus' holy and precious name. All right, both here and at home, stand with us. Uh, let's go ahead and stand together. This song just seems more than appropriate uh, to sing this morning. Consider Christ.
I'm thankful for the faithfulness of God. Amen. We'll take your Bibles and go back to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 2. Ephesians 2. I trust as you're turning in your Bible this morning that God is speaking to each and every one of you through the book of Ephesians. The, uh, but every time I think, well, I'm going to, Lord, I, I think I want to preach on something else. God just has, hasn't allowed me to go off track of what he's already given me to preach and what we were preaching in the series. It's amazing to me the uh, timing of everything and how he has worked everything out according to his will. Uh, wasn't supposed to preach last Wednesday night and then was... You know, today would have been the first day I was able to preach uh, since I got back and was able to preach. And we were able to look last Wednesday night at Ephesians 2, verses really 1 through 11. And this morning, I want to pick it up again in verse number 1. We're going to go all the way down to verse number 13. If you'll read with me, the Bible says, And you have the equipment who are dead in the trespasses of sin. Aren't you glad today that God made us alive? Amen. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and power, the Bible says, of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Again, in context, remember who he's speaking to. He's not speaking to the lost world. He's speaking to a group of believers, of faithful believers, of people who are of like mind. And the Bible says in verse 3, among whom we all had our conversation in times past, talking about the children that work in the disobedience and a, the prince and power of the air. Notice in verse 3 it says, among whom we all have our we all we also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and the mind, and, and of the mind were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I ask you Wednesday night to underline this in your Bible, but God. Aren't you glad? But God. Well there was a, a day uh, several people posted a uh, it sounds as if you were writing that a fourth grader was writing the story of what's taking place in America, what's taking place around the world. Uh, all of a sudden, there was a virus, a very bad virus that came in, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, the, the toilet paper all disappeared from the stores, and all the water, and all the, the different things. But, but notice, but God, and, and, I, and, I, and I believe that in, this is all said and done. We'll, we'll say, well, I was there back, back when I was... You know, just a young boy, some of you that are children that are growing up, you'll, you'll say, you know, when I was a boy, there was something that took place, but God. There'll be some seniors that are sitting here listening this morning that'll say, you know, in my days, I remember, but God showed up. There'll be some young adults that'll remember, and through your years, you'll, you'll tell some young people down the road, but God. And, and, and aren't you thankful that God shows up? Aren't you thankful that we serve a God? I couldn't imagine what it's like going through a storm like this without God. But God, and notice the reality is, but God who is rich in mercy. And aren't you thankful we don't get what we deserve? Aren't you thankful for his grace and his mercy in our life? For his great love wherewith he loved us. And boy, aren't you thankful today that he loved you. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he may show exceeding, uh, show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Listen, the workmanship of God created us unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God's predestined plan for your and my life is that we walk in his works, that he has a plan for our life and that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. At that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Could you imagine living in this day and age without any hope and without God in this world? There was a day, if we will look back in our past, where all of us who are saved today, we were there. But God, but God changed everything. I want to focus on verse 13 this morning. But now in Christ. 
Christ Jesus, ye, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Notice the Bible says we're made nigh. The word nigh is close in fellowship. It's an intimate relationship with God. Those of us who are afar off, now we have a personal relationship with Him that in the stillness of this hour, that still small voice that speaks to us, that intimacy with God that is so personal that you can, it, it's as though He is speaking to me during this time and at the same time, thousands of miles away, He's speaking to someone else or just down the road or even in the next bed or oh, just the next room beside me. He is speaking and He's comforting and He knows exactly the cares of my heart. You'll buy a vote of me to Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, a verse we've been over many times. Uh, the reality of it is the day that the blood of Jesus Christ made you nigh, when you were drawn close to God, you became a new creature. Old things were passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Look at verse number 18. And all things, all things are of God. You should underline that in your Bible. In this time, all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ, by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So we have the ministry of reconciliation, and we have been committed, and he has given unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Why are we here? That good work of God is that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. During these troublesome times, many people have asked the simple question, was well, this the apocalypse? Is this the end, preacher? Is this it? And I wanted to, you know, I want to make sure that everybody that asks that question, and anybody that wants an answer, I'm ready to give them an answer of the hope of Christ Jesus. That God has put us in the ministry of reconciliation. They don't have to be alienated from the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. They don't have to be alienated from the life of God in Christ Jesus. They don't have to be alienated from the truth of who we are. In Christ Jesus. Isn't it good to pillow your head knowing that God's got this? Several people have quoted that simply, hey, God's got this. He has seen the beginning from the end. He makes no mistakes. And while we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, where the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. This is about the souls of men. The reality God said, I'll tell you what, you won't quit playing on Sundays. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just slow everything down on Sundays. And I'll just take a moment where you just carve out. You're coming up on the day when you're going to celebrate my resurrection. And there are so many folks that are so busy around the world. Listen, he just said, you know what, I'll just stop everything. I'll stop your flying. I'll stop your playing. I'll stop your, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring your focus back on me. Aren't you thankful that all around the world today, people are coming together and praying? They, spanned, they, they scanned over to the walls in Jerusalem, and thousands upon thousands of people aren't really social distancing like they should, but they're there, and they're saying the only hope is Jesus. The only hope is God Jehovah. The only hope is, and, and you think about the reality, how many texts and how many things. I mean, you're listening to a president. You're listening to a vice president. You're listening to doctors and people saying, here's what you need to do. You need to obey the social media, but you need to, say it with me, pray. Pray. Jesus said in Jeremiah 33, 3, God said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. God, send a revival. God, do what only you can do. The Bible teaches us that the blood of Jesus Christ has changed everything. And where the shedding of the blood is, there's remission of sins. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 22, none of this would have been possible without the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Without Christ shedding the blood, we could not be forgiven. In other words, we would be lost. We'd stand guilty before God. But he shed his blood for you and for me. Oh, what love? Do you know him today? If you don't know him today, I encourage you, if you're listening to me this morning, accept him today. If you don't know how, call me today. Text me today. Facebook us today. We want to take the Bible and show you that God wants you to be reconciled to him. So you say, well, what did the blood of Christ really do, preacher? Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. First of all, I want you to realize, number one, we're going to look at four things this morning in a little bit of time that we have. How many feel like you have a lot of time now? All right, so amen. Preacher, just preach, amen. So notice the Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 18. In 1 Peter 1, 18, God has claimed us back from the enemy. Notice in 1 Peter 1, 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed, but with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your con from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers. Listen, it wasn't a prayer that saved you. It wasn't going to church that saved you. It wasn't how much you gave that saved you. But understand, verse number 19, but with the precious blood of Christ, as the lamb without blemish and without spot, who barely was ordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Right now, in this pandemic, God is manifesting himself for you that by his blood, by his blood. It's not religion. It's not a church building. It's not a prayer. It's not the traditions of men, but it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from our sin. By whom we do believe. Aren't you glad today it's not based upon my belief, but it's by him. He is both the author and the finisher of our faith. That raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. I have to ask myself this question. Well, where's, where's your faith at? Where's your hope at? My hope is found in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That God's got this. That God knows exactly what we're going through exactly what's going on. One preacher said, well, the reason why most churches aren't quitting and doing live stream, and some of them are, are fighting and going against and having meetings, and, and they said, it was, it's all about the money. And I said, you know what? If it was ever about the money, they've got a problem. Because yeah. to be quite honest, God's got this. This is God's church. You are God's people. Psalms 107, one says, I'll give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. He has taken us away from the enemy. We don't have to think like the enemy any longer. We no longer have to let the children of this world and the fears of this world and the cares of this world. We no longer have to listen to the flesh. We can listen to the Spirit of God who lives inside of us and guides us. Unto all truth. The Bible teaches us not only does God and Christ's blood claim us back from the enemy, but it cleanses us from our sins. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 9, the Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, or adulterers, or adulteresses, or effeminate, or abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, aren't you glad? Such were some of you, but ye are washed, ye are sanctified, ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. In 1 John 5, 1, it says, Whatsoever, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that beget, that, 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 that beget loveth him also, that begot, that is begotten of him. Boy, that's a tongue twister. Say that real fast. Let understand in verse number two. By this we know that we love the children of God, even, even, no, no, so, so, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and the commandments are not, his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born, for whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is he that came not by water, 
and blood, but even Jesus, who, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Aren't you glad that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us? He bought us back from the enemy. Aren't you glad that it cleanses us from sin? The blood of Jesus Christ not only cleanses us back from the enemy and cleanses us from our sin, but it changes our attitudes and our desires. We'll get to the message here in a minute. But I want you to look with me, if you would, back in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. My attitude is going to change. Understand, my desires will change. Why? Because of what the blood of Jesus Christ. When he made you a new creature, I don't want you to be alienated from the life of God. I don't want the blindness of your heart or the cares of this world or the thoughts and intents of man. Listen, I want you to understand, left to yourself, fear will take over. And understand, as we look at this passage of Scripture, for the love of God, the love of Christ, constraineth us because we we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. What's that? Listen to what it says. It changes my perspective. Notice who I'm living for. Verse 15 of 2 Corinthians 5. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, now here's that verse we quote all the time, he is a new creature. A new creature. He gives us the ability, this good work that he's given us in Ephesians chapter 2. He saved us unto his work to be in that ministry of reconciliation, that good work. It's not the old man that we're talking about. It's not the old sinful nature that we're talking about. We're, we're dead to that. We're alive what the blood of Jesus Christ did. It enables me. When I think about people who've been saved, and I think about my father-in-law who was definitely, in this world's mind, even in the policeman's mind, a vile sinner. But when God saved him, he changed him and gave him a new heart and a new life and a, and a new hope and a, and a new plan. I, I'm, I'm saying today that when God saved my dad, he, he saved him from his sin and he washed him and he cleansed him. He claimed him back from the enemy and he saved him from his sin and he gave him a new attitude and a new desire. Our desire ought to be that others, yes, Lord, others, let this my motto be, others, yes, Lord, others, that I may live for thee. It ought to be that others come and are washed in the blood of the Lamb. We sing the song, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Some places we say washed, but I'm saying, have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Listen, the reality of it is we forget who we are. And in the busyness and the cares of this life, we try to please God in this beggarly flesh. And even, even as, and as Paul would write here, he said we're not even focused on the flesh of Christ. We're focused on the blood of Christ and what God did. He made me a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become now notice what he says in verse 18. We often don't read this. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He's committed unto us. Notice what the Bible says in verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Back to that, we are his exact, we are his representatives of what Christ can do. For henceforth he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, verse 21, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Look, if you would, in Hebrews 9, 11, and I'll get to the message this morning. Notice, but Christ, being come the high priest of good things to come, by greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not 
of this building. Neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood he entered into once, he entered in once into the holy place, having or having obtained eternal redemption. How long? Eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifer sprinkled, uh, sprinkled the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who hath eternal spirit, shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot unto God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Perhaps this morning you're sitting here and your past is beating you up. And you feel like, well, the judgment of God or, or the reality. I want you to understand the blood of Jesus Christ will claim you back from the enemy. No matter where you're at today, you may be in the thick of it in sin. You may be walking in darkness and lying and doing not the truth. You may be listening to the enemy. But I'm telling you today that the blood of Jesus Christ is the answer. I'm telling you this morning that it will cleanse you from your sins. You say, but I've been there so many times. How many times can I go for the washing of the water of the word? The Bible doesn't put a number on it, by the way. The reality is you come unto him and he'll cleanse you. If you've never been saved, he's seen your sin from the beginning, the past, the present, and the future, and it's all been washed in the blood of the Lamb. He's already, already paid. You just need to recognize who you are in Christ Jesus. It will change your attitude and it will change your desire. You say, Sam, what's the message for this morning? Look, if you would, about the blood of Jesus Christ in Colossians 1. 19. In Colossians 1, 19, I want you to see that the blood of Jesus Christ calms our fears. In a day when many are fearful, as I looked this morning, there were, what, three, 318,662 cases of coronavirus around the world. 13,000 people, 13,672 have stood before God on whether they accepted him or rejected him. In the U.S., 27,000 people have the coronavirus. 347. In Alaska, 21 people now infected. I'm saying the reality of it is God has given us a ministry and as you have opportunity to reach out and be a neighbor, to bake him a cup of co a, a plate of cookies or to check on them or to check on the elderly. Listen, don't, don't neglect the responsibility of who you are in Christ Jesus. What would happen if they died? What would happen if they if they, if, if they contracted this disease and what would happen if they could not breathe and what would happen if they were taken from this life into eternal life? And you who are an ambassador of Christ failed to tell them of the love of Jesus. I encourage every father that's listening to me to sit down with your children and this time to be still and know, to help them write out their testimony of how they know they are saved. I encourage every husband, every wife to listen to each other's story of salvation. Tell me the story of Jesus. I encourage as you're on the phone and you're talking with loved ones, ask them the story of Jesus, how Jesus saved them, how he cleansed them from their sin, the day that he claimed them back from the enemy, the day that their attitudes and desires changed. The Bible says in Colossians 1.19, for it pleased, it pleased the Father that in him, the Bible says that in him should dwell, that all fullness should dwell. And having made perfect peace through the blood of of his cross. By him to reconcile all things to himself. By him I say. Whether they be of things of earth. Or things in heaven. God says having made all peace. Through the blood. Of the cross. We overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb. In Revelation 12 11, When understand during that horrible tribulation time. It will be by the blood of the lamb. I want you to think about the reality. Of today in the church age. The reality is by the blood of the Lamb. What changed my dad? What changed my father? All what changed many of you? What changed our attitudes? What changed our desires? Was the blood of Jesus Christ. And what should calm our fears? 
What should give us peace is that we're washed in the blood of the Lamb. The old songwriter wrote this song. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. How many believe that this morning? Would you or evil a victory win? There's power in the blood. Wonderful power in the blood of the Lamb. The songwriter wrote, there's power, power, wonderful work, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And I submit to you, it's time that those of us that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb not cower, but understand, find ourselves on our knees like never before to claim who we are in Christ Jesus to realize we have a ministry of reconciliation, a work that God has called us to do. He's not going to ask us to do what he'll not enable us to do. And in the stillness of the moment, look to those around us. Hear the story of the power of the blood of the Lamb. In verse number two, would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. Perhaps today, husbands and wives, as you're having to spend more time together, you're realizing you haven't spent time together in a while. And perhaps there's pride and perhaps there's, you know, feelings that have gone the wrong way. Can, can I help you today? It's the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the focus. It's our attitude. It's how everything changes. When we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Can I help you this morning? In verse number three, the songwriter wrote, Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in a life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Perhaps you're sitting here this morning under the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. My encouragement to you today is realize that, hey, Jesus doesn't love me more than he loves you. He doesn't love me. He's no respecter of person. He would that all would come to repentance and understanding this morning. And this morning, he wants you to simply, simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Would God's blood wash your sin away? Preacher, you don't understand how bad I've been and the wickedness that I'm involved in. I'm telling you today, the blood of Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago was shed. And he's already paid for your sin debt. He wants to make you a new creature. Put your faith and trust upon him. You're sitting here this morning and you say, Preacher, I'm saved, but I've been walking like the children of disobedience. And I've been living a life that's focused on me. And I've been focusing on mine and what I'm losing. I've been focusing on the cares of this world. And I haven't had that peace, that passive all understanding. I have this, and I encourage you today, the blood of Jesus Christ will calm all your have made peace through the blood of his cross. And then lastly, the songwriter wrote, Would you do service for Jesus, your king? There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's power, wonderful power in the blood of the Lamb. Daily. I encourage you not only, not only to begin to write down people's names and pray for them, I I encourage you to live daily and, and, and understand and realize, pray the blood of Jesus Christ over family members, over church members, over community members. This is the city that God has given us, and this is the state that God has placed us in, and this is the nation. Pray for the people that are in our leadership, and listen to reality. There's wonderful power. Let God be glorified in everything that we do and say. I want to ask Brother Warner to put up that song and ask the ladies if they'll come and play the song. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. If you're at home today, if you would stand, perhaps today, if you want to put a bunch of power, 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 boy, we ought to believe that in this hour. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Hymn number 190 if you snuck it in got a book. <laughs> Would you be free from 
from your burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. To worry for victory when there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, one working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, a wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. Oh, to be free from your passion and pride, there's power in the blood, there's power in the blood. Come for a plenty to cow on your side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonderful power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonderful power in the precious blood of the land. Those who be wider, those wider than so. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Thank you.